To make the pendant, I'm going to use about three quarters of a box of Macon's Clay, and I'm using white. Um, I'm going to start by cutting the package in half, and I'll put the rest into an airtight container, and we'll get back to that later. But then I'm going to custom color my white clay, and to do that, I'm going to be mixing it with some Americana Decor Chalky Finish Paint from DecoArt. I'm using this Rich Treasure Turquoise color. I love this color. And I love using the chalky finish paints to mix with the clay. It just gives it a different feel, almost a softer effect when it's mixed in. You pour some paint onto the clay and then just begin to mix it with your hands and continue to mix and mix and mix until it's thoroughly incorporated into the clay. Once your clay is fully colored, the paint does not come off or come out of the clay. It's in there for good. And once we have it mixed, we'll be ready to roll to the next step. Next, I rolled my turquoise clay to about an eighth of an inch thick, and I just made sure that what I rolled was large enough to fit the clay cutter. I wanted to create custom colored texture paint to use with my stenciled design. So I started with basic white texture paint from Chroma, and I'm mixing in some dazzling metallics paint from DecoArt, and I'm using the copper. And what I found is that when I mixed the copper metallic paint with the white texture paint, what resulted was basically a rose gold type of color, which I really liked. Now, the more paint you add, you can add as you go to darken it, but the more acrylic you add, it will affect the overall end result as far as how much texture and dimension you get. But it still gave me just enough of a raised design that I was happy with the finished outcome. So I placed my Mum Mandela stencil from createalong.com onto my rolled clay and just pressed it a little to make sure it was going to stay in place once I do my painting with the texture paint. And I'm going to put some of the texture paint onto the edge of this sturdy card and sort of use it almost as a squeegee or a scraper over my stenciled image to make sure that the texture paste gets into all of the areas of the stencil so that when we're finished we have a great raised design. Once I had my textured stencil design on the clay, I used my large round clay cutter to cut out just the center of the design, and then I set it aside just long enough to let the texture paste dry, not the clay itself. So it took maybe 20 minutes or so for that paint to dry. Next, I mixed some of the copper dazzling metallics into more white clay to make a light copper or rose gold colored clay. I rolled more of the turquoise clay out and I wanted a larger circle and I didn't have a clay cutter so I actually used the rim off of a mason jar to cut a circle that's just slightly larger than my focal circle. So I removed the clay from my larger circle cutter and just smoothed the edges a bit and then went ahead and mounted the mandala image in the center of that circle. Fresh clay will stick to fresh clay without additional adhesive. If my printed image had dried, I would just use a little bit of a clear drying adhesive like Beacons 3-in-1 or something similar um, to mount my layers together. To make the border around the edge, I extruded the colored clay, the rose gold colored clay, with the Macon's um, Ultimate Clay Extruder. And I used a slotted disc, it's kind of a small rectangle. And I just made sure I extruded enough to go around the pendant once I twisted it. I added just a tiny amount of Beacons 3-in-1 around the outer edge of the pendant and then began to mount my coiled clay strip. And I kept carefully coiling it and moving it all the way around till it met together at the beginning point and then just cut it and hid that cut edge in the coil. To make the bale, I twisted some more of the extruded clay and created a two-loop circle and then just mounted it to the top of the pendant. And my clay was still fresh, so I was able to just press it in to adhere it a bit. Again, you could have used adhesive if your base clay has dried. Next, I used more of our turquoise clay and mixed small balls. Mine are a little smaller than maybe a garden pea and placed them around the stenciled image and I used my largest ball tool from my professional toolkit to just push them in place and leave an indentation to add a little more decorative detail.
I wanted to add a bit more of a sheen and this deco art metallic luster in the rose gold, um, like I pointed out, it matches that copper colored clay that we made and the tinted texture paint just about perfectly. And I just used my fingertip to apply a very light touch on the raised areas around the border of the pendant and over the blue circles that we impressed around the focal image. And it just gives it that little bit of touch of luster. Once the clay had dried for 24 hours, so that I was sure it was fully dry, I went ahead and added this great uh, turquoise teal silk sari ribbon to hang my pendant and a large copper closure to finish it off. I hope you enjoyed this project and join me next time for Creatively Crafty with Cindy McGee.